Using sympathy to fill their pockets, these celebrities were caught faking cancer in the dumbest ways possible. Starting off with Boogie 29 H.H. who lied so much that he forgot his own lies. You are faking. No, don't move all. You are faking your cancer diagnosis, Boogie. Why does he order a bone marrow biopsy to confirm it? Well, if he ordered a bone marrow biopsy to confirm it, it would be weird that you told us that you already had a diagnosis and a confirmation. To back it up, he posted a convincing video on his YouTube channel. Three weeks back, I said that I likely could potentially have a form of cancer. He was offered $80,000 to prove everyone wrong by showing his diagnosis to a third party, all of which he refused. Boogie2988 is a pathological liar. He cannot help himself. Just like a pile of dog shit can't help but smell like poop, Boogie can't help but lie. Multiple YouTubers came in and, and offered thousands upon thousands of dollars to Boogie, up to $80,000 to just show a piece of his medical record to a trusted third party so that way they could verify it that he really does have cancer like he claims he does and he refused. In the public eye, he used his cancer as a shield from his previous wrongdoings like the crypto scam. At first, no one could confirm whether or not he was lying, but what was true for sure was that he lied about spending the money on medical bills. The money is already spent. That's, it's, it's, at, it's at Mercy Hospital right now. It's gone. I used it to pay debts. I used it to pay medical debts. You showed me a payment for five fifty on June 28th, which is after we talked, after you told me the money was all gone. Yes! Have you never heard of the colloquialism? Yeah, that money's all gone, it's all spent. I have a specific thing I need to do with it. His timeline was poorly made, which resulted to this moment on tape. I'm saying... I'm not used to this level of scrutiny! I'm I can tell. Yes. There's nobody madder than a narcissist caught in a lie. The only cancer he's dealing with is himself. Yelling out of control is a usual symptom of a cancerous lie. To save dear reputation, he would shift the blame towards Zilla, claiming that he had framed him by editing the entire situation out of context. You told him that you weren't getting paid from this show. He played the fucking recording because he recorded you. Then why? Then uh, I understand that. Do you think people can edit things to be a little bit out of context? This guy is so manipulative. He has managed to move the story from uh, the money's at Mercy Hospital right now to, well, I have $2,500 of medical expenses at some point in the month to, well, the reason I'm ending the month with $5,000 is because I'm such a great saver. And this, by the way, CoffeeZilla records you without telling you he records it's you. Not. He says, I recorded him without his consent. Despite me telling him up front this was all going to be public and that I was approaching him for comment. A next part will be brought live that proceeded to hand Boogie his biggest L. Why are you praying to God two years after you said that you have cancer that you don't have cancer? So why are you talking about expensive cancer treatments that they don't even know if you have cancer? That nothing because has been they're treating it! While Boogie 2988 had faked a heart attack in the past, Extreme Games had a clean slate before they posted the video suggesting that they were dying. I've been fighting this kidney disease now for literally four years. And it's finally got the best of me. I can't literally fight it anymore. I'm holding 16 kilos of fluid in my body. And when I say fluid, it's literally because my kidneys can't filter my fluid out anymore. At the same time that he was dealing with all that, I was actually going through problems and diseases of my own. Some of their statements included the words, I was about to develop cancer, which is a weird thing to say in itself. I'm dying a slow death. It's called aging. First of all, the fact that both of them were on the edge of dying at the same time came out a bit suspicious. Throughout the video, it was clear that they were forcing on a persona to help support the emotional theme of the video. Now, as far as making shitty clickbaity content goes, I could care less. I mean, there's millions of people that do this on the internet, and I say get that money. More power to you. Uh, but the second you start pretending you're dying in order to get clicks and views after your channel's kind of suffering and not performing as well as it used to, well, that's when I start to just raise a little, I raise a little eyebrow to that. In the same video, they would host a fake giveaway as to increase the engagement and hence push the video to more people. We're gonna give away two iPhone Xs, two of them. We're literally gonna give away two of them. That's how much we love you guys. And all you gotta do is literally like this video, turn on notifications on our channel and subscribe. And that's it. A giveaway in your We're Dying video where people have to like and subscribe and turn notifications on to stay updated and see if they won the giveaway in your We're Fucking Dying video? <laughs> in a follow up, they looked really healthy and even promoted their fake doctor's channel. We're gonna go in and hopefully this is the answer, guys. This is the way that we're gonna get healed. So we've been waiting a long time for this. Like, 
it's crazy guys okay let me get this straight you're dying from kidney disease and vertigo respectively and you travel to the united states from australia to see a chiropractor to heal yourself i mean i'm not a doctor i am a detective but this sound uh, i mean uh Currently, the videos are deleted and even though the short viral sensations was achieved, the 4 million subscriber channel averages 30,000 views a video. Daisy Marquis is an influencer with over a million subscribers on both Instagram and YouTube. She received heat for messing up a storyline that she had made up years prior. They took out some blood work and they were like, oh, are you anemic? And I was like, yes, I was like, I'm anemic. I was like, I've already been knowing this. They were like, oh no, you're not anemic because of your iron level. They were like, your hemoglobin level is low. That's where they explained everything to me. So pretty much what sickle cell anemia is. One eternity later. Oh, in 2018, I got a BBL. I never denied it. I just never addressed it. I got the surgery and obviously like for the people that have gotten surgery, they ask you questions beforehand like about your health and stuff. I remember they asked me if you're anemic and I was like yes and they're like okay usually with patients who are anemic, you know, we'll keep you, we'll monitor you afterwards just to make sure because some patients lose a lot of blood, some don't, okay. like blah blah. So I remember waking up and this nurse came and she's like hi honey, like you know we're just monitoring you like you did lose a lot of blood, like we just want to make sure that you're good, like she's just like talking to me and she's like so how long have you been anemic for and I was like oh like since I can remember and she's like oh she's like you probably have sickle cell and she just said it just like that dude that is the first time ever ever in my entire life that i had uh -huh. ever even heard that word right and i just remember she said that and i was like yeah yeah like whatever and yeah whatever and then like the third day is like when i was finally coming back to life and and i remember looking at my dms and like message people being like how like where are you where have you been like i hadn't posted on social media for those three days and, and then i go into full panic mode when i tell you I did not think about how difficult the aftermath was going to be. And I remember getting out the surgery and it literally felt like I got ran over by a trailer. I started freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, like, what am I gonna tell my fans? Like, I had no content pre-filmed. Like, I go into full panic mode. And I remember at the time it was just my mom and my ex there with me and they didn't know what to do. And I was just kind of like in a frenzy and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to say that I had sickle cell. So whenever I thought like, oh, I just have sickle cell, I, you know, when you like go, like when you have symptoms and you go on Google and you like self diagnose like, yourself. You thing, yeah. Okay. So I, my dumbass, my stupid dumbass really thought that like it was like a cold and you get like a flu. Okay. That's what I thought. As much dishonesty as she portrayed, she doesn't chop the most vicious case of Bill Gibson. Her story starts off by being diagnosed with terminal cancer with the brain. She declined all prescribed medicine and allegedly healed herself by eating healthy. Bill Gibson was all about clean living before she was busted. So how did she end up working for an establishment like this? Tonight her former boss spills the beans on the serial con woman's secret job. Did you lie while you were on the stand? Based upon medical records that the media were able to obtain, Gibson would have known that she did not have brain cancer. 